I support it 100%, but I'll have a caveat. This has been done in Malawi, it has been done in Zimbabwe. In Kenya. In I have examples, Kenya, to varying degrees of success. But it is done in conjunction with other anti-corruption measures like the asset declaration regime. So it's not enough to do the lifestyle audit. You need a robust asset declaration regime with a robust publication regime with excellent verification system and a resourcing of the institution that will do the verification. That is capital intensive. Are we ready to spend on fighting corruption? That is what we should do. What, what's the difficulty in doing so, especially when government has not expressed any such difficulty? No, no. I'm, my, my concern is simply, why are we delaying for so long? Okay. In fact, the conduct of public officers bill was virtually competing with the right to information bill, mm. if you care to know. Yeah. We had, in fact, my, my, my predecessor, uh, former Commissioner um, uh, Emil Short, was actually the one who was pushing this conduct of public officers bill before he left office. How many years down the line? So why are we playing ball with the people of Ghana and pretending that we are, with all respect, pretending that we are, we are fighting corruption, we have the will to fight corruption, but we are not doing the right thing. Why should the conduct of public officers bill, which actually encapsulates the asset declaration regime, conflict of interest, among other codes of conduct, and we have, we have, we have allowed it to stay in parliament, get out of parliament, return to parliament since the fifth or fourth parliament. Why? It's not interesting. Is it perhaps because the people who pass it are afraid and they are the ones in power? Well, I, 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 cannot, I cannot say that. Yeah, but I've but I'm asking that. this question because what's preventing parliament from passing this? That's the question I'm asking. Well, I think you may have to get the leadership of parliament to, ask, to, answer, that, to answer that question. Mm. I, I, this is on the back of the fact that even the right to information has actually been passed. So, yeah. currently, has it been brought back? Has the public officer's conduct bill been brought back to parliament or it's not been reintroduced? Uh, as I indicated, as soon as the present attorney general got appointed, once the bill fell out of parliament, he brought out the bill again and requested all stakeholders, including the commission, to provide more comments. We have given the comments. And I know he, in, he was in a hurry. He insisted that he wanted the comments within one week. After that, we did a stakeholder consultation at Nat Hall before the bill can go to uh, cabinet. So where it is now, I don't know. If it is between cabinet and parliament, you may need to ask somebody else more knowledgeable in that. Case. Now, I get your point on this. But are you saying that if we had a public officer's conduct bill, we could have prevented what is being alleged now about impropriety, land grabbing, or all the other things that's happening? If we had it, with all the amendments that the stakeholders pro uh, proposed, including verification, including publication and gazetting, and including clarification by the declarants, and the sanctioning regime administratively, which the commissioner and his uh, colleagues have recommended to make it easier for us to apply, I'm very confident that we will not be in the situation we find ourselves. Because we would have seen my assets in the Gazette. Mm. We would have seen anybody else, and what you have, both your income and your liabilities, we would have seen them. So I don't, I, don't, I don't know what is a big deal. People may be having some things to hide. That is what I can say. Otherwise, if we really are committed to fighting corruption and, and ensuring integrity in the public service, this is very small 
to do. At least for the people of Ghana, we, they deserve it. Now, there's a bigger question, though, about the conduct of public officers. Yeah. Recently, they have been under the scrutiny because the belief is that they acquire positions and they use that to acquire wealth in ways that are unlawful, that are not in sync with public morality and all the rules that we have put in place over the period. How widespread do you think this situation is? Again, I don't have the evidence, but um, I believe it's widespread. Because to everybody who has been given a state responsibility and a state budget, if you don't declare your assets, we are walking into a minefield. Okay. Because we don't know what you what you came in with, and we don't know what you legitimately own, and at the end of your office, what you are legitimately living office with. So why are we not holding the bull by the horn? If you we want public office to really be a service and not a place for enrichment. In this case, illicit enrichment, we need to sit up. And I am saying that this, in fact, this week or this month, uh, what has happened should give us source for sober reflection.